Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Rajni Sharma and today I am going to deal with RNA processing. In my previous video I have shown you how uh, RNA get transcribed from a DNA strand which is a template one. On that case RNA which is newly synthesized is uh, known as immature RNA because uh, that RNA is containing introns and uh, we don't need introns for the translation. So, we need for to first uh, access out that one uh, and uh, for the RNA processing there are three generalist, uh, the two general three steps. One is uh, uh, splicing of introns, Y prime capping and polyadenylation. In this video, I am going to deal just with the introns splicing. So, let's start. First start with the RNA processing in messenger RNA. What happens if we suppose this is a primary transcript then it will definitely contain introns as well as, as well as exons. What we need here is the only exon part. Uh, but before that it need to be uh, capped out at the ends. So there will be first 5 prime capping. This prevents the degradation of the ends by the exo, uh, exonucleus activity. After that the introns are spliced out and we get the uh, only uh, exons one. Now after that there exists the polyadenylation. Now we can see that the RNA form or synthesized after this all these processes are the matured RNA. Now prokaryotic gene is in course without any interruptions. In case of eukaryotes genes are interrupted by non-coding region known as introns. This was proved in 1977 by Philip Sharp and Richard Robert. Few exceptions are there. These are histone proteins and Saccharomyces cerevisiae which lack introns. Presence of non-coding region DNA can also be proved by DNA-RNA hybridization. How is that? If we suppose this as the DNA strand and this green one as the RNA strand then when we will hybridize these two strands then what we will get some of the the strains of the DNA is not get uh, uh, bound with the RNA and this the non-bound or the uh, looped out reason is the introns. There are general four classes of introns. Class 1 or group 1 intron is generally found in mitochondrial, nuclear and chloroplast messenger RNA in fungi, algae and plants. ATP is not required uh, during the splicing of these introns. And the, uh, another thing is that the splicing mechanisms involves trans esterification reactions and these are self spliced. Second is the group 2 introns. It is somewhat similar to that of the group 1 introns but it is not found in the nuclear uh, of nucleus of uh, fungi, algae and plant. Rather it is found similarly as that of the group 1 intron in mitochondria and chloroplast. It is also uh, it also doesn't require ATP for its splicing. Also it involves the transesterification reaction and also it is self spliced. It is somewhat similar to uh, somewhat not it is very much similar to that of the group 1 introns. If you will talk about the third group, group 3 introns, then it is the largest group of introns and it is found primarily in the nuclear messenger RNA and requires SNP protein or SN uh, uh, RNPs for its splicing. I will discuss that further so don't worry about that. And the last group, group 4 introns is found in the tRNAs and splicing require ATP and an exonucleus activity. Now let's start. I will deal uh, about all these introns one by one. I will first start with the group 1 introns. What happened in this? The guanosine 3 prime hydroxyl group forms a no normal 3 prime 5 prime postposter bond with the 5 prime and of the introns. The 3 prime hydroxyl of the exons which is displaced during this process act as a nucleophile and it will attack on the 3 prime end of the introns. After that it will be spliced out and the result uh, and the resultant will be ligated 
and now we have only the exons part. The nucleophile in the first step was be maybe guanosine, GMP, GDP or GTP. The splice centron is eventually degraded. Now second group it is also similar to that of the group 1 as I already have told but only difference is that, difference is that on that case guanosine was attacking from the outside but in this case uh, uh, there is adenine group which is within the entrons it will similarly attack on the 5 prime and, uh, entrons uh, and then it will will reach the uh, or expose the hydroxyl group which will then attack on the five, uh, 3 prime end of the exons and will spliced out and the resultant will be ligated this was so simple now if you will see the case of group 3 splicing then they, uh, they are not self spliced sorry this would be not they need spliceosomes and since net and they are named as spliceosomal entrons, the spliceosome is made up of a specialized RNA protein complex called so small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, uh, also known as SNRNPs, and sometimes pronounced as SNRPs. Each SNRPs contains one of a class of a eukaryotic RNAs, 100 to 200 nucleotide long, known as small nuclear RNAs or SNRNAs. The RNAs and proteins in SNRP are highly conserved in eukaryotes from ACE to humans. Now, how group 3 uh, splicing acts, uh, how excision takes place in this or the we can say removal of introns. In this, first of all, there are two proteins, U1 and U2, which are complementary to the 5' prime side of the introns and 3' prime side of the introns respectively. If you will see here is that the U1 is complemented that of the, uh, the, uh, that of the uh, 5 prime side of the entrons and U2 is complemented to that of the 3 prime side of the uh, entrons. And here U1 recognize the AG sequence sorry uh, entrons followed by the AG sequence and GU recognize the sequence followed by the GU. Now if you will see here G. Uh, it will bind with the C group. Uh, now, if you will see in the small portion, or uh, if we will uh, complex, uh, compress the uh, diagram, then what we will see, the U1 and U2 will bind in this uh, in their respective region because they are complementary to that one. After that, with the presence of U4, uh, U6, and U5, it will form inactive spliceosome. After that, uh, U4, U6 complex is removed and now it becomes the active spliceosome. After that, uh, it will, uh, uh, will excise the entrons from one side and then remove it. After that, similar to that of the one as we I have already discussed during the replication, then how primer is removed and ligation occur, there will be the ligation of the uh, exons. During this process, ATP is, is utilized at the time of attachment of U1 and U2 and formation of the inactive spliceosome. ATP is required in this process. Now, some messenger RNA entrons are spliced by less common type of spliceosomes. In what we have seen, first U1 and U2 were binding uh, uh, with the uh, two sides of the entrons. But in some cases, you, uh, it gets replaced with the U11 and U12 SNRPs. Uh, how they recognize? As we have seen that U1 and U2 were complementary with that of the 5' GU and uh, 3' AZ terminal sequence. But this time U11 and U12 will recognize the entrons having the sequence of 5' AU and 3' AC terminal sequence and it marks as an entronic splicing site. Now, the final type, which is the U4 type of splicing, it is similar to that of uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, excess, uh, we remove the primer in case of RNA replication. I have already have discussed that in the RNA replication in the second part. If you have missed that, and then I am I have already given the, the link of that in my description. You can get it from there. Now, J, uh, sorry, group. 
4 splicing. What happened in this first exonucleus will remove out the antrons and it will expose the phosphate uh, from the 5 prime side and hydroxyl from the 3 prime side. After that kinase will remove the hydroxyl with the help of ATP and it will expose the phosphate one. After that the ligase will add one more phosphorus along with the ATP uh, in this process. Uh, it also involves the ATP. After that cyclic nucleotide phosphodiester will, uh, will change the position of phosphorus from 3 prime to 2 prime side. After that hydroxyl will act on the phosphorus or to the 3 prime side of the antrones and it will remove it out and it get ligated. After that, it will rearrange like this, and now it form the it uh, now get uh, get uh, ligated. The exons get ligated. Now we have the matured one. That's all was in this video about the RNA splicing. In my upcoming videos, I will discuss about the RMS uh, about the capping of RNA, which will be something like this. So don't forget to subscribe my channel be yourself and do subscribe and don't forget to share it. That's till then goodbye and have a nice day.